Have you ever looked at a bottle of wood glue that said 30 minutes of clamp time, but you went ahead and clamped it overnight anyway? You know, just to be safe. Let's test that to see exactly how long you really need to clamp wood glue for. This is a set of five glued up boards that has been drying with a clamp on for 24 hours. The usual scenario for most woodworkers, including myself. Let's crack them. Super consistent. If we remove the highest and the lowest value and we average out the middle three, it took 428 pounds of force to break this cherry board. At a closer look, you can see that the failure was the wood and not the actual glue joint. This jig is designed in a way where almost all of the pulling forces is concentrated in the middle where the two boards meet. Yet, the brutal pulling forces found a weaker area next to the glue line to break the wood itself. But I'm willing to bet you already knew that, right? Wood glue is stronger than the wood itself. Can you still get this much strength after just 30 minutes of clamping? We're definitely gonna get to that, but right now I have five boards that have no glue in them whatsoever and we need a baseline of comparison. On average, these white cherry boards without any glue in them took 811 pounds of force to break. But if the wood broke in both scenarios, shouldn't the breaking forces be similar? Not exactly. While the glue line is stronger than the wood, it also makes the middle of the joint more stiff and less forgiving to its neighboring wood fibers. That's the part that fails. The natural wood, on the other hand, is able to bend almost into an arc and better distribute the forces, making it much harder to break them. So when people tell you that wood glue is stronger than the wood itself, they're technically right, but depending on the application, natural wood without any glue can be stronger overall. In all of these test pieces, we're using three and a half inch by seven inch cherry that is one inch thick. Because no joint test is meaningful without a nice tight fit, I'm using a hand plane with both edges lined up next to each other such that when you fold them inwards like a book, it creates a gap-free joint. Your move, power tool users. In all of these cases, I'm using two clamps with 700 pounds of clamping force that totals to 1400 pounds. Because our glue joint has an area of seven square inches, that gives us 200 PSI of pressure, which is within Tight Bond 3's recommended clamping range pressure of 175 to 250 PSI. Personally, I think 175 to 200 PSI is an overkill because PSI is a measure of pressure per square inch, right? And it would be very hard to achieve that much pressure on thicker and longer glue ups without putting a lot of clamps every couple of inches. I've been doing woodworking for about a decade now and I've never really gone overboard with the number of clamps that I use or how tight I clamp them. So indulge me for a second as I glue up five sample pieces where they're pressured by none other than these hands. We're gonna come back to these later in the video to see if no clamp is just as strong with a nice tight fit joint. While that's drying, let's get back to our normal tests of figuring out joint strength over clamping time. This sample has been drying for 12 hours in the clamps. On average, it took 341 pounds to break these joints. In every case, the glue joint held up just fine and the wood fibers are the ones that snapped. If you're keeping track, 12 hour clamping time is only 20% weaker than the 24 hour clamp time. I just saved all of your clamps a pointless 12 hour shift. As a woodworker, you probably know from experience that 12 hour and 24 hour clamp time works just fine. So let's go in the extreme opposite direction and work our way up. Starting with five minute clamp time. And I gotta tell ya, I'm sweating bullets here while doing this test because all of the steps has to be perfectly executed each time because we have such a short window. This is a good time to mention that all of the glue ups were done more or less in the exact same way in room temperature and the humidity and all of that stuff was identical. The wood grain orientation was, well, I tried to mix and match the wood grain as much as possible, but wood is a natural material and it kind of does what it wants. Okay, let's watch this five minute clamp break in real time. Right, so I did four more samples for the sake of science, but they pretty much all broke before I could get it into the testing jig. 
Tightbond's website says this glue has an open assembly time of 8 to 10 minutes. It is clear that 5 minutes is just not enough time for the glue to dry and provide any strength before removing the clamps. Up next is the 15 minute clamp time. Now that we're getting past the cusp of open assembly time for this glue, we're getting the pieces to hold together strongly enough for the actual testing, but the joint is still very, very weak and on average it took just 4 pounds to break these joints. Yikes. Definitely don't touch those clamps at this stage of your glue up. Tightbond recommends a minimum of 30 minutes of clamp time and to leave those joints undisturbed for 24 hours. But just how strong is the joint just after 30 minutes? Ooh. That had some juice. <laughs> On average, it took just five pounds of force to break these joints and they all broke at the glue line. After 30 minutes on the clamp, the wood felt pretty solid to me on the hand and if I hadn't done this test, I would not know just how weak this joint actually is. Some of you might be wondering if the amount of glue or the type of wood species can have an impact on this test. My answer to that is probably, uh, but I'm gonna level with you guys here. I'm an average guy with a full-time job, a tiny human and an even tinier YouTube channel. Each of these videos take about 60 to 70 hours for me to produce and I only have so much time and resource in a week. But if you do like this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel. It obviously helps the channel out and together we can get to doing more tests and doing more crazy things. And thanks, I appreciate that. Up next is the one hour clamp time. This took an average of 58 pounds to break and they all broke at the glue line. But the next test is far more interesting to me. After four hours of clamping, four of the five joints had partial failure at both the glue line and the wood. So we're at this duke session between the glue and the wood and they're both kind of winning. The fifth joint, unfortunately it failed at the glue line, but it gave a very good fight. Oh, and on average, it took 153 pounds of force to break these joints. Do you guys remember the glue up with no clamps whatsoever? Yeah, that one. Well, they've been drying for 24 hours and now it's time to see if my hands are as good as these Bessie clamps. On average, and I'm so excited to tell you this, it took 376 pounds of force to break them. This is only 12% weaker than the 24 hour clamped version. Does this surprise you? It doesn't surprise me because I've done plenty of picture frames, boxes and all of these things with just tape and sometimes spring clamps and those projects held up just fine. I hope this illustrates to you how a tight fitting joint does not need a lot of clamping pressure and you should focus more on the fit of your joint and less on choking your clamp handles. And finally, the manufacturer recommended test. These were clamped for 30 minutes, clamps were removed, joint was left undisturbed for 24 hours. You've waited, I've waited, it's been 24 hours, let's crack them. Really? On average, these joints took 227 pounds to break and surprisingly, all of the failure were at the glue line. And I really don't know what happened here, guys. Maybe someone smarter than me can explain this to me in the comments. You know, we know 30 minutes of clamping time in the test, it only took five pounds of force to break those joints, but maybe I wasn't being gentle enough in the lack of disturbance over 24 hours, I don't know. The other thing is my shop did experience a three degree temperature drop on this particular sample, but I can't imagine that would have a huge impact. And if it wasn't for this test result, I really wouldn't have considered these joints to be weak by any means based on how they looked and felt to me. So the big question here is how long should you clamp your projects for? Well, I don't recommend 30 minutes. <laughs> so if you have perfectly milled wood with favorable temperatures and you like to live maybe just a little dangerously, one hour is a perfectly suitable time to remove those clamps, especially for smaller projects because the strength you get at one hour is 
pretty good. For the risk adverse chickens like myself, <laughs> I'm gonna start removing my clamps at four hours and free those clamps for the next glue up because by four hours, the joint is nearly as strong as the wood itself. There is an old saying in woodworking that you can never have enough clamps. And while that may be true, I hope you'll need far fewer clamps because of what you learned in this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.